bring us what I tie to foundation on which prosperity is built. So that is the first teaching on our seven Sundays, seven strategic Sundays for prosperity. And I love this man's breakdown of management. He calls it the five P's of management. It's called the mince bug theory of management. Five P's. The first P of these five, one is called plan. Plan. Planning. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. If you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. There is no Holy Spirit involved when you are failing, especially when you haven't planned. It's funny how believers don't plan. But when there is disaster, it's shaka shaka baba, shababa, shababa, robobo, bobobo, iredede, redede. Tell that person, keep quiet. I have said many times, I'll repeat it one more time. On the last day, you see, when God starts judging people, that judgment day, if I'll use that terminology, many human beings, especially Christians, we apologize to Satan. You know why? Satan has received many false accusations because of people's incompetence and laziness. Oh, it is the devil's fault. But Satan is on his own. Oh, one man, my uncle wants to kill me. Listen, are you the only one alive in your family? We pray but lack plan. If you don't have plans in life, your ideas will not take flight. No plan. No, no, no success. Number two, five piece of strategy. You must have a ploy. Number one, I said what? And number two, I said what? You must have a what? A ploy. P L O Y. Someone say ploy. Now, what is a ploy? A ploy is a cunning plan. Or action that is designed to turn situation to your own advantage. You must have a ploy. The Bible says, be as humble as a dove. Are you listening? It says, be as humble as a dove, but be as wise as a serpent. If you don't start thinking like a snake, you will not prosper. Um, are you listening to me online, everyone? Listen to me. Yes, I know you are born again. I understand. I know you are spiritual. I understand. Please, despite your spirituality and your born againism, understand that you are still living in this world. You are still living in this world and to succeed in this world you need to think beyond th you need to be ahead of the competition you have here see speaking in tongue does not pay bills speaking in tongues won't pay the, the light bills or the water bills or your, your mortgage it doesn't pay it you require a ploy. Tell your neighbor a ploy. P L O Y. A ploy is it's not just a plan, it's a cunning, a cunning plan. Meaning you must have a strategy that will help you outsmart and outfox the competition. When you have a ploy, it helps you evolve. The reason why many people lose pace in life is because they stop evolving. Being born again does not mean life becomes boring. The thought P, the thought P is called pattern. If you lack pattern, you can't be successful. If it is not Panadol, it can never be what? Panadol. When you see Donald Trump do his thing, you know Donald Trump is at work. 
It is your work and the way you do things with your hands that should define who you are. You should see, listen, those that know me very well, when I am involved in something, you can tell the difference when I wasn't there. I have a pattern. What is your pattern? What do people know you for? When you touch a wood, they should say that is, that is Chelsea's signature touch. When you touch wire, that is Jason's signature touch. If your work doesn't have a pattern, it means you lack a signature. And if you don't have a signature, you won't have a brand. The Bible says in Titus chapter 2 verse 7, Titus, some people say Titus. Titus or Titus chapter 2 verse 7. It says, in all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. Showing yourself a pattern of good works. In doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, and sincerity. Showing yourself a pattern. What is your pattern? Today, some people are cold. Tomorrow, hot. Next tomorrow, look warm. You know, the Bible says, if you're neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. The fourth P, position. Position. Your position determines your victory over your opposition. Your position determines your victory over your opposition. In the book of Numbers chapter 23, the Bible tells me about a man called Balak. Balak was so wicked, he wanted Israel to be wasted. He went to contract a prophet called Balaam. And watch this. When it was time for Balak to get Balaam to curse Israel, do you know what Balak did? He went to certain strategic positions to curse Israel. In Numbers chapter 23, if you look at verse 7 to 8, verse 14, and verse 27 to 28, certain strategic positions, Balak took Balaam. He said, curse them from the top of this place. Curse them from here. And he took, he took up his mountain. Go, go, go. He says, and he took up his par parable and said, Balak, the king of Moab, has brought me. Which verses? He says, now, watch. He says, saying, come curse me. He, he says, out of the mountains of the east, it says, come curse me, Israel. If you go straight to Numbers 23, give me Numbers 23 verse, verse um, 14. Numbers 23 verse 14. It says, and he brought him, this is Balak, brought Balaam to the field of Zophim, the top of Pisgah. It was a strategic spiritual symbolism to Israel's destiny. If you look at the same Numbers 23 verse 20. 7 and 28, he took him again. Balak took Balaam to the, a strategic position to cause Israel. Watch this. The plan of Balak was not the present Israel of that time. The plan of Balak was to kill Jesus through that cause. Because watch this. In Numbers 24, verse 16 and 17, look at what Balaam said. Numbers 24, verse 16 and 17 and he had said which her which heard the what the words of god and knew the knowledge of the most high and saw the vision he saw the vision of the almighty falling into a trance but having his eyes open look at verse 28 he says what i shall see him but not now i shall behold him but not near there shall come a star out of Jacob and a scepter shall rise out of Israel and what will happen and it shall and, and shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Seth. He further went on to talk about how that star will destroy the Edomites and that's what we have in the last day Jesus destroying the Edomites. Watch this. The star out of Jacob the scepter from Israel was talking about Jesus. So if he had cost if Balak had, Balak had succeeded in getting Balaam to curse Israel, there would be no Jesus. And lastly, the fifth P, your perspective. Your perspective is everything. You can have a plan. You can have a ploy. 
You can have a pattern. You can have position, positioned rightly, but your perspective is everything. The way you see things, or, or let me put it this way. The way you define something tells me how you see things. Am I communicating? So a man's definition of something already tells me how he sees things. A man's perspective on things determines how he speaks about a thing. Your perspective is what we either advance you or default you. Perspective is an angle or direction in which a person looks at an object, a way a person sees things. In Genesis chapter 13, verse 14 to 17, the Bible tells us how God called Abraham. It says, the Bible says, and now after Lot, after Abraham had cut off from Lot, the Lord said to Abraham in Genesis 13, he says, now lift up thy eyes. But his eyes was already open. It means that someone had to live Abraham's life for him to then start seeing well. Lift up thy eyes. The moment Abraham lifted up his eyes, he says, now, see. All the land from the north to the south to the east and the west that you can see, I have given it to you. Now watch this. So when I was preparing for this message, I stood from a point, and I looked as far as I could see. Forward, to my left, and to my right, and backwards, representing north, south, east, and west. And I said to the Lord, if I am to take that word literally, it means as far as I can see, that is what I'm limited to. That means Abraham would not have seen beyond the hills in front of him, or the open field to his right, or the deep valleys to his left, or the shallow grounds to his, to, to, that is behind him. The Lord said to me, it, was not a, it wasn't a literal statement. The Lord said he was only trying to change the perspective of Abraham's vision, his way of seeing things. Abraham was a man that never saw past what he, where he was. That's why he required a lot of faith to walk with God. Looking for a land whose foundations were not built by the hands of men, but by what? The hand of God. As far as your eyes can see, I've given you. The Lord was telling him, enlarge your perspective. You're going to say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. As I begin to pray. As I begin to pray. Help me, O oh Lord. Help me, O oh Lord. To visit my foundation. To visit my foundation. In any way. In any way. And anywhere. And anywhere. I have built. I have built. On the wrong foundation. On the wrong foundation. Lord, help me correct it. Lord, help me correct it for me, O oh God. Help me, Lord. I am ready. I am ready. For correction in my foundation. Lift your voice. Open your mouth and begin to pray.